Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be tracking our shapes using objects and applying it to our draw and update functions to start seeing some real movement on the page. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a basic example of updating this. So instead of placing it on a random point on the page, why don't we adjust it so that it follows a predetermined path? Now what we can do is use an object to track our current state and keep track of the states. And then when we go into our draw and update functions, we can pull the information or set the information in this object and then apply it to our canvas. So for now, I'm just going to use a basic example of creating a, let's just call it square. And this is going to be an object with a bunch of key value pairs that you can keep track of to actually adjust this. Now, if we wanted to fall, we, we wanted this to maybe follow a path or just increase in position, go diagonally down the page. What we can do is set X and Y key value pairs. So we can say this is our initial state and we want it to end at a final state. Let me actually just comment this out for now so that we don't have our square uh, repeating over and over again. So now this is basically some information to keep track of our square. But in order for it to work, we need to both get this information and apply it to our canvas as well as update it in our actual update function. So what we can do is instead of having this random system, we can start our rectangle at the X and Y coordinates that we have in our system here in our object. So we have square dot X and square dot Y. Now, if we wanted to update this in our update function, we could really do whatever we wanted. But let's say we wanted it to follow a diagonal path. So to do this, instead of just leaving this blank, we can actually add some code to update these functions every time the update function is called. So since we want this to go diagonally, it needs to go down one and right one every single time. So we're gonna say square.x plus plus, which is incrementing it by one, and square dot y plus plus. So what this is going to do is increment it every single time. And now this is basically just going to allow it to move down the page as it draws this increasing incremented x and y position that we have stored in our object. So now if we uncomment it and refresh the page, So now if we uncomment it, maybe just reduce this time a little bit, and then refresh the page, you can see that it starts moving down the page right here. So although this doesn't technically look, although this isn't technically a video, you can see that it is responding to our system here, and it is actually working. So now that we have some of the basic setup. I'm just going to go ahead and show you quickly with this demonstration how to adjust for edge cases and boundary cases and things like that, because you can see that it can quickly run off the screen. So we don't want the X and Y coordinates to increase beyond what they are already at. So what we can do is actually adjust them. So what we can do is include some conditionals to change the direction that the X and Y coordinates that they're at, depending on where they are. So right now we can just say if square.x is greater than or equal to the width of the canvas, so that means if it's off the screen, then we can just say square.x minus minus, else square.x plus plus. So this is only going to increase it if it is less than the width of the canvas. So if we look down here, and well, this is going diagonally, so we won't actually get to see it applied. But if we go ahead and do the same thing to the height, greater than or equal to c dot height, square dot y minus minus, else square dot y plus plus. Now, if we actually look at it, it should bounce back up. So we wait for it to hit the edge, and then this edge condition will apply, 
and it will bounce back up. Now we've gone pretty far already and you can see that this can be a pretty powerful tool, but in order to adjust for edge cases and boundaries and make this a more complicated system, as you can see here, it kind of went off the screen. So if you want to adjust for things like that, you are gonna need to really keep track of a lot of variables. So just quickly, quickly, let's go ahead and actually set it up so that this thing will bounce off of the edges. Now we need to include some more information, namely the width and the height of our square here. So we're going to include a width and we're going to set this to 50 initially and then a height. Now we can replace these in our key value pair or sorry, we need to put square dot. And this gives us an extra element of control. But what we really need this for is to adjust so that when this hits the edge, we need it to bounce back off. So what we're going to do is set up a system of conditionals here so that it will change the width and the height as it bounces off of certain places. So we're going to create an if else statement here. So we're going to say if square dot x plus plus square dot w. So this is going to basically take the x coordinate of our square plus square dot w is greater than or equal to c dot width we need to say square dot x minus minus. Else, square dot x plus plus. So let me just comment out the square dot y to show you how this works. And it's going to look pretty weird because it's going to be bouncing out back and forth since we don't really have another variable to keep track of the direction that it's moving in. So you can see here that it's doing that. But this is just a basic system that you can get involved so that you know what is going on. Now, if we wanted this to totally move the other way, what we could do is include another system called direction. So we could say dx, for example. And then we're just going to say r for right to begin with. And then we go have a dy. And then we're going to say that's down. So we're just going to put a d. Now that we have some more variables to keep track of, what we can do down here is actually set the direction based on what's going on here. So we're going to say if square dot dx triple equals to make sure that everything is adjusted and make sure that the strings are exactly the same. We're going to say right, then square dot x plus plus. Else if square dot dx is equal to left square dot x minus minus. 
So right here, this is basically going to set it up so that it's not dependent. Well, it is currently dependent on the width, but when we implement this fully, it's going to be dependent on this new variable that we set up. Now what we can do in our update function is set it up so that we change the direction based on this system here. So we're going to say if square.x plus square.w is greater than or equal to c.width and, so we're going to use the and conditional, square.dx triple equals right, then we change the direction to left. So right here, we're, once it hits, it's going to change the direction and move back. And then all we have to do is do the same thing for our left condition. So we're going to say if, and we may as well just copy this here, square dot x minus square dot w, since we're going to the left, is less than or equal to zero. And square dot dx equal to left, square dot dx equals right. Now this is of course only dealing with our y condition here, but what's going to happen is as this approaches the edge, square.x plus the width is going to be equal to our c.width. And since it's moving to the right, it needs to bounce back. Now when it's moving to the left, it's going to hit, and then it's going to be equal to zero. So once you go square.x minus the width, and then to the left, it bounces off. Now, as you can see here, as it approaches the edge, We just need to remove this condition for our left condition since it's already on the left side. But basically what's going to happen now is as it approaches the right, it's going to be square dot x plus square dot w is greater than or equal to c dot width. Since our left condition plus the width is going to be at the width and since it's moving to the right, it's going to move to the left. Now the reason we need to include this condition is basically just for redundancy. If it moves past the edge and it is greater than the and than the width, but it's moving to the left already, then this is going to fix it and flip it to the right side and it's going to keep moving off until eternity. So we need to include this condition to make sure that it does actually bounce back and doesn't accidentally flip if it's over the condition. So you can see that this is a pretty complicated system, but and it does get more complicated than this. But this is already a really good setup. If we include the Y coordinate system, we can get a fully fledged bouncing square bouncing around this canvas. So let's go ahead and repeat this for our Y coordinates. Now what we can do is use the DY condition that we have here as and replicate this system for our Y coordinates. So let's go ahead and copy all this code and repaste it. And now we're just going to be changing this to the y condition. So if we say if square dot dy equals down, we say square dot y plus plus. Else if square dot dy equals up or u, square dot y minus minus. And then we can do the same thing here. Square dot y plus square dot h, since h is going to be the height now, is greater than or equal to c dot height. And you can kind of, and you get the gist of it. So you can see that whatever we do here is just going to be flipped and mirrored using our Y conditions. So I'm just going to finish doing that. And once that's done, we're going to have a square that bounces up and down wherever we need it to go. Just like that. All right, so now we have, a, oops, I need to change that to DY, this to DY. And that should be good. So now we have our update code working for both X and Y. So as it hits the corner here, it's going to hit and then bounce back up. So you can see here that we now have a bouncing shape. 
Now this is going to look even cooler if we start it at a different position, so let's say 250, because for now it follows a predetermined path. We can also change the speeds that we want to move at, so we can say plus equals 2 instead, and this is going to create some variation in our path here. And we can really do whatever we want. We can even create more variables up here to include our squares to move in different orbits. So you can see here that we have a pretty good system set up here, and it is animated. We have an update function that keeps track of all sorts of things, width, height, speed, and we have good conditionals so that we can obey edge cases, and now it looks like a full animation. Now this is only for one square, but in future videos, we're going to go through and make it so that this applies to multiple, and we can do all sorts of just adjustments and things that we want to adjust. So we can create multiple squares, draw them, and move them around individually. But for now, we have a nice animation set up, and we're going to continue this in future videos.